Don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it. Hi, welcome back to the Open Casket Podcast. Today we're possessed by the demon of some dude. Just man. Just a guy. This this is a burn. He looks like a burn victim. It's it's honestly just a well, not, a dude. Not a burn victim. He, he looks like he got stabbed. So it's more like he just was born in the UK. <laughs> He, he was got, born. I mean, he, he he got stabbed and acid attacked. He was born in Liverpool. He got stabbed and in Liverpool. He, and then he got a dog. Then he, yeah, a terribly CGI dog. 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 dog looks like something a white woman would adopt and say he don't bite. And would fuck. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what white women do. Hold up. Am I right? <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out, Shout out white, white women, women. <laughs> of a certain What's... age. Ooh, what of are you? Certain age. <laughs> Look at this. We're to... Today on the open casket, we're talking bootlegs that you buy on eBay for movies that have in-print releases, like this copy of Visitor Q. I have a official copy of Visitor Q. This came with two disc. There's no copy of Visitor Q. That's two disc. <laughs> Yeah, I know. This is a, and, um, this is, a, this is not a legit cop. <laughs> when you flip it over, the guy tried to argue, and, um, the second disc is a DVD-R. <laughs> but what's on the second disc? I, he said special features. I never even tried to play it. Uh, wait. There's... And this sketchy, sketchy gray market uh, ex drummer from Germany. We well, we like that. You know I got that shit on me. It, it, he had to step so, away to grab it. I got that on me. So um, you know what's funny about Quebec? They have their own rating system, and this one got an eighteen to the surprise of no one. But sometimes I pull out DVDs I bought. I'm like, why is this 16 plus so they stick it on there too which kind of looks shitty but hey at least they tell you and it's not a sticker on the plastic thing so I can't take it off and it looks stupid but look Urshel it says ne contient pas la version française and that's on the insert so I can never take that off so thank you Quebec very cool and in a moment shout out <laughs> yeah, okay, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> what, what else I got in here? Look at this. Today we're talking about some, some Phil Prince movie. <laughs> Man, I kind of regret not having bought that whenever that came out. Nope, they're all terrible. I know. I, all, I know. I watched all three and I think the highest rating I gave to one of them was a one and a half. Oh, is that the one that it's includes just, the it, one with the, the fart and their... They're yes, the that's shit the reason they got a one half and not a half, <laughs> because the movie literally ends with a fart, <laughs> and it's and it's not from the actors. You just hear a fart off camera, and the movie literally just ends. Maybe like, somebody oh. had their dogs on set, and the dog just let out a fart. Speaking of one halves, if anybody wants a copy of Trash Humper, this is this is like honestly like the rare DVD too, with like the insert and everything. I was gonna say anybody... give it to John, but he probably already owns it. Probably. Um. This has the fanzine by Harmony Korine in it. Man, if you're if you if you like trash humpers, this is not a safe space for you. You got your brains on backward. I I genuinely cannot express how much I hate that movie, and it's not that I don't get it. Every time I say I don't like it, it's all, I always get the thing that's thrown at me like you don't you just don't understand it. It's about no, I understand it. Having sex with trash cans. There's what? There's nothing to understand. Well, I mean, it's like Harmony Korine was trying to. He was like he was trying to be like. Uh, I think there was somewhere that said he was going to put them in like unmarked DVD cases and put them in like video rental stores, and that's what it originally was intended to be. And it's like I don't want to watch your shitty meme. Yeah, I don't it's want to. Not even, it's not even a good meme. <laughs> I don't want to watch. Like, your I shit get it. Books. He's like, he's like, this is trash. And he's like, this is so funny. It's so great. Like he made trash. You said it right there, folks. He made trash. Just because he did it as a meme doesn't mean that it's not unwatchable. Speaking of unwatchable trash, what are we talking about today? Evil nights. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, wait. Psycho Pike. What the? I got all the classes. I what is? Know. Oh, I remember Evil Knight. That cover looks horrendous. I saw, is That's it... that, this is the official release, <laughs> and this is the DVD it comes on. I... <laughs> it has no special features and no subtitles, but it is an official release. Who put that out? It's the, 20, the man, 25th the anniversary edition. <laughs> There's nothing on Dream, it, but it's the 25th. Time films. It's just the director of the movie. Puts out his own movies on 25th eBay. anniversary. So what do you get for the 25th anniversary movie? I mean, to be fair, let's not kid ourselves. How many of us actually watch the special features on things most of the time? I mean, I do sometimes, but I, when you're making a 25th anniversary edition, you kind of want to pretend that you care. About a product you're putting out, but I don't know who am I. Where are we? Someone that watched someone watched the pee pee poo poo man. They were talking about the pee pee poo poo man. Now, what was your first experience, Urshel, with the pee pee poo poo man? Um, I unfortunately missed this one in theaters. Despite like, I think I actually had a ticket, and somebody either got sick or something came up. Um, I missed this in theaters, but then I I forgot about it for a long time. As well, I, mean, I, wa I watched uh, about half of it with my mom, uh, in probably the year it came out. So I'd say probably 2017. And we got about halfway through. And my mom's like, "This is stupid." And we turned it off. <laughs> and then in when COVID hit, there was a time where I was just going through Netflix for, on my computer like all day, and I would just watch movies. The, I'm like, I haven't seen this before, and I was watching stuff like There Will Be Blood and classics and then i watched the bye bye man <laughs> and i said to myself never again <laughs> it was your 9-11 they, they said it couldn't be done they said we'd never do it on the podcast they were wrong <laughs> they were wrong i love how people were like oh it's gonna be like alien beast no this is it's actually far, it's far more watchable <laughs> This is actually, well, I was going to say this is actually a movie, but that depends on your definition of movie. What I love about this movie, okay, Urshel, is that it this tried is a, this to... Is, this is a make-a-wish fulfillment <laughs> to <laughs> disabled men. Uh. What I adore is that this this came out like the peak of like Blumhouse, kind of PG-13, like shitty, just by the book horror movie and I thought to myself like you can't make something like more generic than your typical PG-13 Blumhouse film and then I watched this and it is so generic that it does a 360 and becomes unholy it original it transcends <laughs> generic into becoming one of the most creative original film I've seen ever this this and Wish Upon came out like around <laughs> the same time I think, and I have to say like the between those two, I mean well this was more watchable. I think Wish Upon I gave it two and a half. Yeah, I did. Oh, they did come out the same year. That was a big year. That was big year for horror. <laughs> Twenty seventeen. Theatrical when times horror simple. was at its peak. A twenty four can out. suck my dick. Give me man. That give me ass man. dog. <laughs> Give me man and dog. Give me it's pretty much dog. John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> it's the retarded John Wick. Wait, when did John Wick come out? What did John Wick came out? Twenty fifteen. That'd be crazy. I think, but the sequel. Oh, it came out twenty fourteen, but the sequel came out in twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. John Wick. John Wick two. The Bye Bye Man and Wish Upon all came out the same year. What a time to be alive. Coincidence? I think not. I did watch John Wick two in theaters. I did so. too, I think. 2017, no. 2017 was a weird year. I just was out of college. I had, like, my first couple gigs, uh, and I was miserable. But, hey, that's okay. The I was, reason I, I was, was miserable is because I... Yeah, the reason I was miserable is I didn't see Bye Bye Men in theater. And who could have? Because I exactly. think this... <laughs> they were moved to, like, a week or two after <laughs> being in theaters. <laughs> I remember oh, when this God. came out, because every, like, YouTube, like, movie critic started doing, like, their Bye Bye Man review, because this basically, out of theater, straight to streaming, and not even, like, 
I watch this on Amazon Prime, and the, the movies that are available on Amazon Prime for horror are like the most generic, typical stuff. But this, this sticks out. And it's one of the few movies in Canada that's free with Prime. The rest are like, oh, you can watch this on Prime through a Shutter subscription, through a Paramount subscription, through... Yep. Not the Bye Bye Man. That shit was free. Thank you, Bezos. Let's, let's, talk, about, let's talk about the elephant in the room really quick before we get to the movie, because the director of this did pass away. Yeah. We're not making fun of her. No. I want to clarify that. Everything, everything aimed at this movie... I mean, it's, 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 it was a little bit her fault, but she did not deserve to die because of this movie. I, I was actually very sad when I found out that she passed away because I was like, man, she, it, it, it really made me actually upset that we'll never get like a, anything similar to this again because oh, I think after this, she got laughed out of Hollywood. Yeah. I mean, she made a movie that won an Oscar, though. Like, her short <laughs> film at least got nominated for one. Uh, Down on the Waterfront. Yeah, the, um, yeah not the, it says this film was nominated for an Oscar for Best Live Action Short Film. Yeah, the, so, and, Oscar nominated to The Bye Bye Man. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood, an alternative, Hollywood cancellation speeder. <laughs> an alternative uh, title for uh, Bye Bye Man was uh, Two Downs in the House. <laughs> <laughs> From uh, frame one, this is so stupid. The other alternative title was One Girl, Two Window Lickers. <laughs> Elliot's sunken eyes. This, people talk about, um, what's his name? Pete. Walker? Pete Davidson. They, they know <laughs> Pete Davidson. Yeah, Pete Walker has sunken eyes. He was Pete British. Davidson with butthole eyes. Oh, Elliot. But before we get to our two closeted homosexuals, um, this movie starts in the 60s because I guess it was a trend that you needed like a, a backstory in the good old days with one of the one of these scenes of all time where this man comes out of the car with a shotgun bangs on doors and just starts speaking gibberish about did you did you say the name to anybody else and uh, yeah, but do, you know, do you know who that man is who, who's that man it's a little way when <laughs> wait what is, is it really when I, when I was like Oh, wait, hold on. He he just came off my no God. I, my time periods are just ridiculous. Didn't I just I'm watch to find him on the Criterion Closet? I think yeah. I was watching him before this. Why Why Winnell was on a bad period? He went from this, and then the next year he was in Insidious: The oh. Last Key, which was oh. admittedly, as a fan of the series, not the best. Man, the late twenty tens were really just shitting out the most generic horror movies you could ever shit out. But yeah, Lay he he's uh, he's the best part of the movie to be honest. Like he's the only actor that actually cared at all. Yeah, I mean he's, he's not good. He's but... not good. Beca I don't think it's him because just the situation and the shitty dialogue about like you didn't say the name right, and you're as a spectator you're like, what is going on? What about like what name? And then he just blasts them, and the effects are just <laughs> so fucking terrible. Oh, oh, yeah. What I was also trying to say earlier is uh, our our criticism in this movie actually don't aren't related to Stacy title. She was just the director and didn't write the movie at all. Oh yeah, because the writing so, on this we could, that's what that was like the big point I was trying to make, and it just escaped me because sure. she was like, I like when we're talking about this. Number one, I would never speak ill of the dead, obviously, but this is also not her fault. The directing is competent. <laughs> Nah, oh, man, this movie looks like shit. That was one of my notes. This is one of the shittiest looking. Like, this looks like. He's trying uh, to be bad. The, no, this is this looks like a <laughs> shitty like sitcom Halloween episode. This looks horrendous. This is shot like <laughs> goddamn. Okay, maybe okay, maybe it is a little bit her fault because the writer of the movie also wrote two of her other films. So yeah, so please. stop hiring him. Yeah, <laughs> Scott Scott Penner. We'll call him Scott Penis because it's easier. <laughs> I mean, I don't God, think he wrote God anything penis. after he's not the a, he's not a... His career died with a... Well, you know. 
the woman who did the casting for Requiem for a Dream did the casting for this movie. How did that? How does that happen? We're getting distracted. We need to go back to the Bye Bye. Oh yeah, what's what's the movie even about? We haven't even. It's we said about it starts. two clos- closeted homosexual college students. So it's very important to note that <laughs> if you go into this, and Urschel told me to do that, and actually makes the film better. If you go into this thinking that these are just two closeted gay men trying to accept their homosexuality and being mean to their girlfriends. <laughs> <laughs> because they can't accept their homosexuality. It makes it way better. I I genuinely I'm I, I'm fully just in the camp that that was intentional, but it's probably not there this movie is goofy and shit. Man, this like the we're introduced by with the, to the characters by like them holding each other like that and being like, ha, ha, are we funny? And he literally he literally <laughs> kisses him on the neck at one point. <laughs> They look at each we'll other with lustful that. eyes. <laughs> oh, but anyway, this is the this actual plot is the most generic thing ever. They unleash this guy named the Bye Bye Man by reading a text that says "Don't think it, don't say it," and he keeps. And then and then they then they try to yeah oh my god so they they try to save themselves. That's it. It's the most generic plot ever. These college kids and at first I thought they were buying the house, but then later on you you learn that they rent it because it's it's not made clear. Uh, these college kids, basically this is your, like, insidious or, or, or conjuring story where, uh, people get into a haunted house, but they don't know it's mm-hmm. haunted, they don't know the past, and then they try to uncover the past. However, I think they were trying to target, like, teenagers, and they're like, come on, teenagers are not gonna go see a movie about a family moving into a house, how about college kids? So, every character that's, like, supposed to be either a parent or a kid is a college kid. I like I'm pretty sure the, the girlfriend of Elliot, the guy with second eyes, is supposed to be the child character, but she's in college, so she just looks like she might be a little slow. <laughs> Let's be real, they're all a little slow. <laughs> they're all a little slow. Oh yeah, but anyway, the yeah, the movie opened up with the him killing people in the neighborhood, asking like <laughs> just... who these people told the name of it and the fact that the the fact that the being's name is the bye bye man is just <laughs> Sounds like a toddler wrote it. Um, but this movie, this movie, it doesn't feel like it was written by AI because if AI wrote this, it wouldn't feel like it was written by toddlers with crayons. Dude, it's uh, it's so generic. They find out about the Bye Bye Man by finding his name on like written in like a cabinet in the uh, in their basement. It can't be like more generic. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. And our three people, we have to say their names because it's very important to note this: is that there's Elliot, John, and Sasha. All of them share a brain cell, but it was not their turn that day when they were recording this. When they're when they're searching the house, they're just like, "Oh, I'm gonna go in the creepy basement," just like every other person in the horror movie. But he goes down there, and John goes to shoot a basketball because let's let's. There's a lot of. Um, <laughs> stereotypical depictions of an African American man um, for John in this. It's worth noting because it's 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 important. Like everything he does just feels racist, and it's like this was written by all white people, and it made me feel really uncomfortable a lot of times. But anyway, he, he was like one basketball cent- at, at, He was one scene away from a eating a watermelon, no basket, and he just, he just goes like this, and he for real, he jumps and goes like this, and he hits his head on a pole. <laughs> But when he hits his head, they don't make a deal of it, and they just move on to the next scene. I don't know if it was scripted. Like, he bonks his head, and then it literally just cuts to the next shot. And it's not meant for a laugh. It's like, why did he just bump himself? <laughs> they they huh. have a housewarming party. So, like, Elliot, whenever he gets the house, you know, he calls his uncle Virgil. <laughs> Wasn't it his brother? Oh, I know it was his uncle. Yeah, it's you're uncle right. Virgil. And uh, Virgil's like, yeah, man, you sure you want to settle down at your age? You know, back in my days, you know, I was fucking pulling poon and banging chicks. And you're here living with your girlfriend and John, this dude. <laughs> and then he looks at John, and then John and Ellie look at each other and do the, the thing from uh, from Top Gun where they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and he's like, are you sure about them? Like, trying to implant, like, oh, she might be cheating uh, on you if, if with your roommate, John. But, oh, we all know that Elliot just wants John, and John just wants Elliot. Yeah, they're so mean <laughs> they're to so... Sasha in this movie that it's, like, actually, like, absurd. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, a joke and it was the Bye Bye Man controlling but no. They just don't <laughs> like her. Just dicks. Because they're dicks to her before they get, like, possessed by the Bye Bye Man. Also, it's worth noting that, that Elliot is just, like, the epitome of, like, the absolutely insufferable, like, quirked up white boy that you see at, like, vinyl record shops. He has the Joy Division shirt oh that, my, you know, anybody such... who wears that, like, I, I'm not... I'm not the type of guy to be like name five songs, but you know it's like it's one of those people. And he's sitting there with his with his glasses on that he doesn't wear except when he's reading. And he's like, "This is like," and he's just reading this book. He's like, "Hmm." And then he's working on his projects, and you never know what they're studying. They're just there. They're just college students, and if you they're saw never what they're studying, it would just be it would be like third grade math. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're doing addition. They're only at the college for like the obligatory like archive in the library scene that you know you all need but before that at the house party for some fucking reason they do a seance because there's this bargain yeah, bin looking emma watson chick there who uh which they're she, also um, mean she's to. also in terrifier which i know is one of your favorites <laughs> yes she was but they're just mean to her, and, like, Elliot's like, I don't believe in that shit, and he does. He, he just, yeah, they're just jerks to him. John is a jerk to to her, too, but he, he sleeps with her later. Anyways, this, this it's seance like, it's scene. It's a cover-up. This, this seance it's cover scene up his love for Elliot. is so fucking terrible, and I love it. Yes, she's, she's sitting there, he's like, they're saying something. Don't... Don't say it. <laughs> Don't think it. And then she just keeps repeating that, but she's still doing it slow, like it's a surprise what's going to come next. Uh, but at first she's like, oh, Elliot, your grandmother died. And he's like, I never told anybody. How do you know that? And he's doubting yeah, John her. John gets all defensive. He's like, I didn't tell her, man. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. And then he goes, you, you just get a sense that like Elliot and, and John have had a lot of like private time to themselves discussing their feelings. He's like, I didn't say anything away from that night. <laughs> and then eventually she's like, I'm not comfortable, and they're pushing her, and then she's like, It's it's telling me, Don't say it, don't think it, don't say it. And then it tries to be scary, it cuts to black, and you just hear the bye bye man <laughs> and it returns and she's just on the floor having like a seizure. <laughs> And screaming, but John is still like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna score tonight. <laughs> My, never mind the trauma that the girl just went through. He's like, I'm gonna bang this chick right there. Oh boy. Um, then he uh, brings her it's home. Also, it's also <laughs> worth noting that that don't say it don't think it is not just one scene in this movie it's... there's a part where elliot finds this like drawer and he pulls it out and it has writing in a spiral and he he literally it's you can read a spiral just by looking on you can see that it's repeating the same thing he's like don't say it don't think it he's like turning he's like don't say it don't think it don't say it. he does that for a good like 30 to 45 seconds which doesn't sound like a lot but it is extended when you're talking about a movie like that's so Generic, that's a long scene, because there's no suspense. This movie cannot build suspense. Every jump scare this attempts is a laughable. Also, the Bye Bye Man is supposed to be, like, this being that, like, is always there when, it, like, tragedies happen. Yeah. And he's... So... So why is he just standing behind doors in the house randomly? He doesn't even come out most of the time. He just, like, you see, like, a glimpse of him in a mirror, like, oh my god. He's just wearing a it's, hood. Yes. And then when you see the Bye Bye Man, eventually, uh, it's j he's just a guy. It's so <laughs> not like some grand reveal. He's a dude with a scar on his face that just points. And he just I does just, this all the time. I just there's remember even a part. There's even a jump scare part where he walks at Elliot, <laughs> pointed at him. He's like <laughs> the 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 poster for this movie. Number one looks AI generated. This never happens. <laughs> That character isn't in the movie. The 
the woman on the cover <laughs> I love it the doesn't photo. even look the same <laughs> box is just him pointing this, of all the frames that you could take out of a movie it's just Doug Jones just pointing at you and that's what's sad too Doug Jones how, <laughs> what happened did you need a paycheck I, I, I'm a I'm a Doug Jones fan and uh, what happened man needed crack money <laughs> I mean, he's in Hellboy, Crimson Peak, Pan's Labyrinth, The Shape of Water, and The Bye Bye Man. <laughs> the, the real classic. Okay, so after that seance scene, um, the John brings back the, the, the goth girl with, with a hat, a big hat. She has, oh my god, the dialogue before that at the party, Elliot's like, only girls that are, cra- only girls uh, who are crazy wear hats inside. <laughs> What? Dialogue 100. What? The? I, th- um, I did take a lot of notes of the dialogue because you can't make this shit up. I nobody could write this bad. We're, and we're gonna spoil. We're gonna spoil this movie too because you. Sh- I don't know if you, anybody should watch this, but I feel like even if you know the ending, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Even if you don't know the, the whatever leads to the ending, just. Does it matter? Because there's nothing. Oh yeah, and Sasha gets sick, and it, but she never gets sick enough to make it like noteworthy. She just coughs. Like you, you can, like she you can tell that it was supposed to be called the Bye Bye Man infected her, but it just sounds like she has COVID. <laughs> she just coughs. I. L- um. Oh yeah, the nickname for her that Elliot has is Bear. What? <laughs> Bear. <laughs> Not like a it's cute what name, he, just what bear. That's <laughs> what he calls John. He just get it confused. He has to have a front. No, and we'll talk about little things after we get past the plot. Because oh, yeah. John and Ellie, we have to talk about this further because it's, it's hilarious. One of my notes is his friend has sex and he just looks sad. Because while he's banging the golf chick, Elliot goes down the stairs, looks at the door, sadly... And then, and then the scene cuts. The editing in this movie is genuinely probably the worst editing I've seen in a modern movie. Like the and like it's unintentionally just hilarious. Like the, you couldn't fake the you couldn't make editing purposely this bad. It's <laughs> it just looks at the door uh, and sad. And nothing. There's happens. also a part where, where where they start like hallucinating um, because the bye bye man and Elliot hits John with a baseball bat, and his and when he like stops hallucinating, his literal response is, "Oh my god, you hit me with a baseball bat!" <laughs> like yeah, this movie is. Funny. But like half the dialogue in this movie is just literally characters narrating what they're doing. It's so great. I have another or, quote. Or, or, <laughs> Why do jocks always want to play a game even at parties? What does it mean, Elliot? What does that mean? El- Elliot, the type of, Elliot the type of guy just to gaslight his girlfriend all the time. <laughs> Which pretty much he does. He does. Elliot's, Elliot just gaslights people. Elliot's like, he's supposed to be the hero, you just hate him. He's just a he's piece awful. of shit. <laughs> he's so terrible. And not a well-written piece of shit. He's not an anti-hero. He's not fucking Robert De Niro from a, Taxi this Driver. Is a, this is a horror movie that's stereotypical, but like the stereotypes of like the dumb jocks and stuff and the nerd... Yeah. They all just got kind of mixed together, so like everybody's just insufferable. But then those are the main characters. Oh uh, yeah, and it was so the plot, the plot. Oh, and um, we didn't talk about uh, what's her name? God, I keep forgetting the the goth chick's name. Uh, Kim. Uh, budget Emma Watson. Kim. Kim. Um, there's a part where they're driving, and she sees a fam. She hallucinates <laughs> this family by like stuck on the train tracks, which like. What in the 1940s is going on here, number one? We're a family stuck on the train tracks. <laughs> She's like, we stop the car, we have to save them. And she runs towards it, and the part's where they cut, and it's her hallucinating, so you see her just running towards the train with nothing there. <laughs> gold. It is hilarious. She's That's... literally going, we have to save them. He's like, stop! That's probably the, the man is The man, number one, is driving his car. Yeah. Any th- Like, he could do anything. He could drive... And park in front of her. Yeah. He could tackle her. He could do anything. He could hit her with his car door. Instead, he but chases no, he her with a bloody like, hammer. <laughs> He's like, stop. 
Stop! And then it and cuts she gets to hit, the... And she gets hit by a train, and then you see a second shot, which is like a POV of the train. <laughs> but my favorite is the goddamn it, train conductor it... yelling at her like she's gonna hear him yell over the train sounds. <laughs> no! <laughs> he's yelling while he's pulling the goddamn horn. No! Bruh! <laughs> but but but, but it, I've never seen a movie that like showed the impact of that twice. So instead of just showing Elliot Singer get by by the train, you get a train POV immediately next. It's and just just a dummy death of like just a dummy. <laughs> the and... movie. This movie had a budget of like fifteen million dollars too. What? Wait, no, oh, budget 6.2 to 7.4 million. That's Where million, they... though. That, this movie had a budget of $6. Like, people have to understand, like, who, who are hearing us talk about this. Six, this six was a million, theatrical... Million, that was the higher Doug Jones. <laughs> this was a theatrical, mainstream, big-budget horror movie. Like, for horror movies, 6 million is a lot. This was supposed to be the next big thing. They were hoping for this to be the new Conjuring. And I kind of hope it would have succeeded, because we could have gotten the Bye Bye Man 2, Return of the Bye Bye Man, Return Bye Bye Man Return Strikes Man. Again, <laughs> The Return of Dude. Yes, the, the See You Later Dude. <laughs> But he's literally just a guy. He's just man. He's not even the bye bye man. He never says bye. Why is he called the bye bye man? That's just his name. There's like there's no there's no reasoning behind it. There is no backstory. Like, like the only like backstory the, we the, get the is from the pointing man. The pointing man. That would be far more like. That's all he does. He doesn't even like wave or say bye bye. He doesn't do it. They're like just... first you hear the train siren. <laughs> And then you just hear it, it's like, oh my god. Because I remember- And then you see the dog. <laughs> the dog- the dog is more formidable than him, but does nothing. He just stands there, the dog is just- The dog there. is- the dog is so much scarier looking than the Bye Bye Man. It's like this massive, like, beast, and it literally does nothing. It just walks- it's just a good boy. It, it just... just walks around. <laughs> it eats somebody at one point, but the person was already dead. Oh yeah, because there's not only one vehicular manslaughter in this film, there is two, and the second one is just as good, where Elliot is just driving sporadically, and the librarian is standing in the middle of this foggy-ass road for no reason, and he just thinks it's an hallucination from the bye-bye man, so he speeds up and smashes into the librarian and she goes flying. It's like, you know, whatever. Things just happen and then eventually we get to Elliot in the house. He's trying to stop the bye-bye man. He finds out from this old lady that if you if you kill yourself and everybody that you told, that's the only way to stop it. Yeah, which um, was why so, the beginning, the, the guy yeah. killed. And also he discovers that through a, an article in the library archive and then He's reading it, but the Bye Bye Man gets makes the time go faster, and then he goes crazy and scratches off the Bye Bye Man off the archives, and then librarian lady's like, what the fuck are you doing, kid? And he just runs away. And then, since the librarian saw the Bye Bye Man, she decides to murder her entire family, because, you know, don't think it, don't say it. If you think it or say it, you slaughter your goddamn family, which is also what Kim was trying to do. Kim was trying to go to Elliot's house and kill Sasha and John, so that's why she had a bloody hammer in her purse looking to murder them, but then she saw the train, and then the police are like, "Where are you? why were you running after this woman with a bloody hammer? And he's like, oh, I can't say it, I can't think it. <laughs> Their argument in front of the police is hilarious. Because Sasha and John just walk through the, the, the police he's tape. Like, he's like, what's the name? He's like, what shouldn't he say? He's like, just the just the name of somebody that he told me. <laughs> the police don't even question them further on that. You'd think that the police would be like, who's the suspect that we're supposed to interview? He's like, I oh, don't oh, know, man. Yeah. Like, all right, you're free to leave. <laughs> you're free to leave. Yeah, she, like, the police just comes back after grilling Elliot, and she's like, well, 
Kim was planning to kill all of you. She wrote a letter, so I guess you're free now. And he's like, okay. And then he goes uh, to his house, and this is where the finale. No. You can no. say the finale. Virgil, Virgil, Virgil and his <laughs> daughter come to visit Elliot. Elliot's gone crazy. He's, he's like, I'm going to kill myself and kill everybody here, so I need to stop it. And um, he's, like, talking about he's going to do it to, like, Virgil through the house because Virgil wants to, like, come in to visit him. And he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he... I th has the fire started in the house by this point? No. <laughs> like, it's... Elliot's like, he's going to burn down the house. Yeah, it starts and he's like, after. He, yeah. And he has the gun, and he's like, don't do anything, Elliot. And he shoots himself. <laughs> Which is also hilarious. Because, <laughs> like, it is. Virgil is the there. The dialogue after is hilarious. <laughs> Virgil's daughter goes, "Hey, what? We have to go back to save Ellie because the house is on fire. I, I don't, I can't even tell you I why the house is on fire." What, I don't think no, anybody says. I think it's just the bite. Because Elliot walks into the house and he sees like Sasha choke John or the inverse, so he like stabs John. But really, it was Sasha. But John's also already dead. And then the bye bye man yeah. shows up, points a few people, and then the house goes on fire. And then Elliot yeah, kills Wikipedia himself. Wikipedia doesn't even. Wiki, it's a major plot point. And Wikipedia doesn't even list that the house was on fire. There's, it does, there's no reason for the house to be on fire. But well, I mean, other than to get the dialogue, he's like, "Dad, we have to go back and save him." And he says, "No, the fire won't hurt him anymore." <laughs> The fire can't hurt him anymore. And his daughter's like, okay, please drive away. I want to go pee. <laughs> and then he thinks he like lost her. And then he finds the old cabinet. And the daughter's like, oh, I found the pennies. Because the bye-bye man is also called upon yeah. with these pennies. <laughs> this yeah, I forgot. Is so He's just dropping pocket change all the time. <laughs> it's just... It's uh, just a, the bye bye man is just a dude with the Parkinson disease just dropping his coins on the floor pointing also at the also the coins say the bye bye man's name I think but she can't read them in the dark and that's like that's how you think the crisis is averted it's like you know that daytime happens right like she can just go back and be like oh the bye bye man well it's kind of implied that you know because they set it up for a sequel because this was gonna be a no, big but the, hit but the sequel is john is somehow still alive and they're wheeling him on a cart and the police is like he's trying to say something and it's like john's final dying breath is saying the bye bye man it's like man he went out spiteful <laughs> the lady John, that john's like if i'm dying i'm spreading this. <laughs> it's like man the lady that elliot goes see the other scene, other than the mans the vehicular manslaughter, is when she just sets herself on fire. <laughs> it's just an old geriatric lady. She puts her hands in the fireplace and she starts. She's just like, like she's made of like starter wood. She puts her hand in there and she's ablaze. And Ellie's there. Don't think it, don't think it, that's not real, that's not real, that's not real. And plot twist, it wasn't, the old lady didn't actually set herself on fire. Cause... <sighs> She's... And after this movie, I do edit sometimes for mixtapes that probably will never come out. I just do them when I think of it because I won't save the joke and I edited it. So like when he goes to lean down, it's Elliot and John whispers and he just goes, Bubba Booey. Oh my god, it's so, it so stupid. This movie is so... It's so stupid. Like, I feel like saying the plot doesn't give this justice. It's so dumb. Oh. The acting in this is so... It, they literally feel like they're disabled. I'm still not entirely convinced Sasha wasn't written as a like actual disabled person. The creepy pasta like Sonic.exe effects on the eyes of the people are just terrible. They're, again, they try to yes. jump scare, and it's just dark, dark black eyes with blood under it, and you're supposed to be scared by that. Now, this movie would be very generic, but if you go into this thinking that Elliot and John are male lovers, the, what if this? I just thought of this. What if this was like even worse, and like a Christian person wrote this, and it's like the Bye Bye Man is there to punish them? <laughs> for their lustful thoughts about boys. <laughs> But they, but they, like, Sasha's in this. She's the girlfriend of Elliot. 
they barely hug in this movie. She sits on his lap and kisses him like one time. They have Elliot no chemistry. Are, like <laughs> Elliot and John have more chemistry than them, and they're like they look like they're gonna like wrestle all the time, and it always gets like it's like oh I've known this guy for years, and he kisses him on the neck. I was like brother. <laughs> the part i was like i was like i was like all right i see you live your truth the part but like they're not but they're not intended to be that way no, the they're thing. supposed to be just college straight college kids but the part where the bye-bye man makes elliot think that john is hitting sasha from the back is hilarious because that, that's how we should have known that it was like not a thing that would happen he's like why would he do that <laughs> It would have been way funnier if he saw him like hitting her from the back, and then and then uh, she turns around and says, "Elliot with a wig on." Because <laughs> Elliot again looks sad. Oh, and whenever John brings Kim back home, they basically talk about how yeah, he, John couldn't get it up. <laughs> yes, and, they get, and he's like, he's more disappointed that he has a girl there with him. And it's not just John. <laughs> it's this movie is like. And and the thing that they say is don't think it, don't say it. Well, when he's you try, he's trying to hide his homosexuality. Don't think it, don't say he's not even he's not even talking about the bye bye man. He's like don't think it, don't say it. It's like what's he saying? It's before he found out the bye bye man is he's just standing by John. It don't nice. think it, don't say it. Because it John... makes it would make sense why it would happen in the '60s too, when it was, when it wasn't accepted. He's like, oh, they found out about my secret. I gotta kill my entire family. Yo, this is totally just a Christian propaganda where the bye bye man is like the guy was married, and he's like, fuck, my wife's gonna know I'm gay, so better shoot up my neighborhood. Also, this this movie is apparently based on a book. What? But it's one. It's one chapter from book. It says, based on the chapter The Bridge to Body Island and Robert Damon Schneck's The President's Vampire. That's quite that's a real the... classic. Another scene that like made me think that they're just gay lovers is whenever they get to the house at first and John is just pissing, Elliot just barges in and he's like, Whoa, sorry, didn't mean to disturb you. <laughs> There's just so many awkward little things in this that make no sense. It's like, why would they show that? I think why? it's because the, the head bump, is... like, the head bump will forever make me laugh. He really smacks himself. I don't think that was scripted. Because, like, you hear a clang and he hit himself hard. And he just goes, like, he's like, ah! Oh. Because the editing is so bad that they stick on shots for way too long, which makes everything just look uncomfortable. When, like, John's hitting also, it from the back, and, Elliot just looks sad for a good, like, 15 seconds. It's just him being like... Uh. And I mentioned I mentioned that this film feels racist. Uh, the same director... <laughs> uh, let's see who the writer was. Okay, different writer, but same director made Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror. Man, just the librarian character, she's like a Medea type character. Char it, it, it's, it's genuine, like, and this feels like, it sounds like we're being racist. Watch the movie. Watch it the feels, there's no other word to describe it other than that. It just feels racist. Like, was there really a reason for John to be playing basketball at that moment? Yes, there's literally just, no reason. It comes out of nowhere. He, he just he, has a basketball. With he him. talks like he talks like the black dude character in every slasher movie that dies first. They like make a commentary on, but this is like unironic. This, yeah, that's the thing. This movie has no subtlety. Like you said, I I didn't know the the exact dialogue whenever he hits him with a bat. I almost killed you with a bat, bro. We know. We saw it. It's it, yeah. I mean, everything's like, it's like, he can't be hurt by the fire now. Yeah, because he's, he fucking shot himself. <laughs> the, the also, he, he, also, the thing is, is, like, Virgil cares about him so much this film. He's like, he's like, always be there for you and everything. As soon as he dies, he just doesn't care anymore. He's like, whatever. He doesn't cry, he just leaves. The fire can't hurt like, him anymore. And he tries, like, Elliot, like, he tries the what? The man? The what man? What man? Like, he tries the... Don't the... you don't say it. <laughs> don't... <laughs> don't think it don't say it and Elliot at the goddamn police uh, um, while he's getting interrogated like don't don't think it no it's I I can't think it I can't say it 
It's you, this movie. Don't a think it don't. Uh, this, the f- this movie is the florist who apparently they rented the house from because that's what we learn is called Mr. Daisy because why not oh yeah and he's so angry <laughs> he's so... <laughs> like like the dude just rented the house like obviously he knows about it but like he he's just mad he doesn't say like stay out of the house he's just angry that he's like complaining yeah. she's like my god like, damn. He's like, he was inconvenienced he's like come on man don't come my to my place son. of employment and ask me about this the dumbass people I rent my home to, my broken down home, by the way, this this house is just going into pieces. He's like, they're angry because they hear noises and the plumbing is probably shot. And Sasha and this, Sasha and this, all of her dialogue is bad and her delivery is horrendous. It sounds like she forgets her dialogue most of the time. I swear she doesn't remember half the shit. And like you said, her sickness brought upon by the bye-bye man is just coughing and not even like uh, just like little eh, eh. <laughs> Sasha's dialogue in this movie is like Ellie where have you been what what's going on it's like we're we're taking a car ride what do you mean like I said I think she's supposed to be like the kid character in like a typical she- horror movie of this kind just think that the writer will, the producers, wherever, were like, we don't want kids. We want college aged kids. We want them to drink in one scene because we don't want to influence teenagers to drink. And then uh, they uh, have this house and there's something in a drawer. The, the quotes listed on IMDb for this movie are hilarious too. The top quote is. Elliot, no, Kim, there's a train, a real train, train driver. No. I wait, wait, oh, here you go. The, Kim, don't it's... think it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't think 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 it, John. Don't say or think what, Elliot, the bye bye man. Lights go out accompanied by loud jump scare noise. Okay, yeah, that's. I thought Kim was the one who said it, but no. Elliot just pulls it out, the bye bye man. Also, Sasha, we talked about Mr. Daisy. Sasha is there, and she just goes, she goes, uh, Mr. Daisy, you, your house is awful. <laughs> <laughs> he's came there to insult him. And he's, that's why he's angry. He's just trying to sell flowers, and some dumbass is just, your house is awful. I have so many things for Mr. Daisy. Just the short exchange with Mr. Daisy, when, when uh, Sasha's like, it's so cold, and he goes, it's a hot house, it's actually not cold at all, honey, maybe you should be home in bed. Man's got a point. Justice for Mr. Daisy. He's the real victim in all of this. I, he's got shitty tenants, I'm sure they haven't paid it. They set the house on fire, for fuck's sakes. No. Oh, God. No, Kim, it's a real train. I love, I love the... The necessity of letting her know that, hey, that's a real train, that big thing moving towards you. The only thing funnier than this movie is the trailer for the movie. It's like, you can, he can make you think that things are real, like a train, and then the next cut is just her eating hit. That is genuinely one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. It, it literally looks like a meme edit, but it's not. It's the official trailer. That's the thing is, I started... Because originally I had no interest in watching that, but then I remember the pee pee poo poo man meme, and I watched it. I'm like, that came from, that came from Letterbox. It's the top review. <laughs> it's the pee pee. It has it has three thousand six <laughs> likes. Probably the most liked review of all time on on Letterbox. Oh God. The the reviews for this movie on Letterbox are um something and what's funny is this has like a 1.5 this is the lowest like i think like mainstream just generic horror movie i think this is the lowest rated movie we've ever watched for the podcast yeah because for some reason alien Alien, beast has like like range yeah a range of retards the the reviews though i've been chanting the bye bye man the bye bye man for the past two hours to see if i can get him to kill me so i can forget about this movie (laughs) 
<laughs> like this was clearly supposed to be like this is the modern day Bloody Mary. Don't say the bye bye, man. And you you can imagine like the people in their suits being like, yeah, in twenty years people are gonna get together at sleep par sleep uh sleepovers. The teenage girls are gonna be like. The bye -bye man. Give this, give this a few years. If Vinegar Syndrome released this shit in 4K, y'all nerds would buy this shit up. And you should, because honestly, this is this is Vinegar Syndrome for releasing Navy Seals on 4K. <laughs> with Charlie <laughs> Sheen, <laughs> the dollar like bargain bin movie. Or he's like, oh my god, Navy Seals. I'm like, <laughs> I. For once, it was a movie that I'd actually seen. It was because I watched it with my grandpa as a kid, and it was even bad then. <laughs> Shout out Scream Factory oh. for The Orphan. It's the same thing as the regular Blu-ray, but you're gonna pay $30 for it. Exactly. Uh, my favorite review for this movie, though, is why would you drive if you know you're hallucinating, bro? Take a fucking Uber. <laughs> yeah, he knows he's hallucinating, and he's like, let's go. I'm gonna drive. Uh, <sighs> this movie is a. So also, shout out to the director of the movie, though, because she was like paralyzed because of her disease and she was still working on a movie. Oh, shit. Which never got released, but, you know. It's not her fault completely. The Bye Bye Man, too. Somebody needs to make a sequel. Someone gave it a three out of five and said, as a fellow bisexual, I can emphasize with the bye bye man's journey to find his one true love. <laughs> this, there we go. There's somebody else agrees. This is an LGBT documentary. This is just about <laughs> the the social pressure of not accepting homosexuality in like backwoods college. Because this movie is set in what? It's so weird. It's set in the... It's, what's the town that it's set in? Because it's so... It's set in the Midwest, right? Yeah. This is Midwest horror for you. Forget about the corn chucker. We're all about the bye-bye man. Yeah. We we'll cover corn chucker. Some film 15 minutes from my house. Yeah. Was the bye-bye man I met man the man who directed it indirectly. I didn't know he was the director of the movie. He was, he was a bartender at a restaurant I went to. He's a bartender now, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he made some videos on YouTube about cocktail making. I'm like, that's that's sick. That's the man. Yeah, to, shout out to him. Shout out, he, was a, he was a craftsman. Yeah. It was good, so shout out. Yeah, so if you want to get your drinks on, the corn checker will be there for you. My favorite thing, though, is when people take movie ratings so serious. Like, if you enjoy something, don't rate it a one-half. I have yeah. to say, like, there's, like, people that re-watch the Bye Bye Man and log it as a one-half saying they loved it. It's like, then don't give it a one-half. Rate things based on enjoyment. People take people take ratings too seriously. Which is a good transition. What did you rate the Bye Bye Man? A four. We, this is a mutual four. <laughs> this is... <laughs> the high, high woman. <laughs> I noted about oh, yeah, the, the bye comment. I just noted bye guys, and then after that, I just wrote we know. <laughs> oh, also the uh, old woman that they see there is Faye Dunaway. Did I did we mention that? Wait, what? From Chinatown. <laughs> what? What? She's in that. Yeah, that so old look, woman we'll sitting we'll, we'll, we'll get the top eight on Letterbox: Chinatown and the Bye Bye Man. <laughs> he was in Chinatown, the network. Bonnie and Clyde, Mommy Dearest, The Rules of Attraction, and The Bye Bye Man. Oh my god. The real masterpiece. That is... that is fucking something. At least it's behind the towering inferno. The librarian was oh, no, in Magnolia. The... What happened to lead these people to this point in their career? Wait, she was in Magnolia? Yeah. She was in The Hangover, Magnolia, Pineapple Express, Dogville? The Transformers movie? But this one is funnier than all of those. I mean, obviously, it's more funnier than Dogville. Yeah. <laughs> this movie's funnier it's than like, Dogville. It's like, it's like, next week we'll watch Dogville. We'll just come on, we'll just have sunken eyes like Elliot and be like, that was a movie I watched. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Lars von Trier, the happiest director alive. It's Well, the main cast weren't in much either. Sasha's in, like, nothing. Um, Elliot, Elliot, I think, was in Chronicle, if I remember his face. He's in Ouija, Terminator. He's in Brandon Cronenberg's Antiviral. 
he's, oh, he's not in Chronicle. He's in Man, the stage. The guy? Oh, Chronicle. Chronicle is that other dude that sort of looks like him. That was in um, the Cure for Wellness or whatever that was. <laughs> Uh, Doug Jones, of course, we talked about his varied career, which led to the Bye Bye Man. <laughs> Virgil was uh, in a lot of um, um, those Mike Flanagan Netflix movies. Yeah, uh, here's here, that's the hottest take I have. I I hate. I won't say it. <laughs> we can I won't say it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna speak my truth because it'll make people question my letterbox ratings if I say I don't like Mike Flanagan. <laughs> Yeah, well, you just yeah, like you said, Jen is. I really don't. Terrifying. I really don't though. Mid, it, Who is midnight she? mass. They forgot the 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 uh, hyphen there. Midnight <laughs> mass. It has a four out of five on Letterbox. I gave it a one out of half. A one half out of five. Out of a hundred and sixty nine thousand reviews, less than a thousand gave it a one and a half. I did not like that show. I I don't like Mike Flanagan. I'm speaking my truth. I like Dr. Sleep. That was a fine movie. And I liked Oculus. That was also a fine movie. But, um... It's okay. We we accidentally... We accidentally kind of shot on Wes Craven last week, so I think everybody's kind of expecting to... I like. I mean, Wes Craven is good. He's a oh, yeah. miss. I think I was mistaken him for he, Toby he's, Hooper. He's, he's, <laughs> he, he, he. Also, I found out that his name is Tobe. Like what? a month ago. What, really? And I hate that. Yeah, Tobe. I hate that. I've always called him Toby. But yeah, it's Tobe Hooper. <laughs> Tobe Hooper is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. Uh, Tobe Hooper. Um, <laughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one of my favorite movies of all time. Me too. I just Chainsaw Massacre 2, one of my favorite movies of all time. Eden Alive. Haven't seen it, but I've heard good things. And Poltergeist. Then, Poltergeist fucking sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't think it, don't say it. Don't think it, don't say it. Poltergeist <laughs> is at best mediocre. At worst, he also dr- <laughs> Tobe Hooper stayed um, directing for a while, and the last thing I watched from him was in 2013. It was Gin, Stop. and it was a Walmart movie, and it was... Awful. You missed. I had. I did a spit take. I got. I was drinking water when you said Tobe Hooper, and for Tobe. some reason. That, that, whoo, speak, t- speak your truth on Poltergeist. Poltergeist is mid. Ah, oh, it's worse than mid. It's just a bad fucking movie. I don't like it. I don't. I actually gave it a worse score than you. I think as I it a two. I, I'm like I appreciate the fact that it's shot well. Like clearly. It, talented people behind it it's just not my kind of movie it's a it's a snoozer it's be a real snooze fest. it's it, man that movie that's a that's a movie that goes hard on like white noise yeah, holy shit that little uh, I, I mean i liked that the bodies that they used in like the bog scene were real corpses that's kind of cool but you know <laughs> the part where the ghost comes out of the tv is kind of cool the little lady I never cared for in that movie. Actually, I mean, Tobe Hooper's not that bad. I don't know. <laughs> Who's the most mid, like, big director? Uh, Probably Wes Craven. No, Wes Craven's got Last no, House. But he's got, no, but he's got very high highs, but his lows are oh, pretty yeah. low. Oh, yeah. yeah. Swap like, thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to tell me that uh, stuff like Summer of Fear... My Soul to Take, The Hills Have Eyes 2, yeah. Yeah. Cursed, Scream, I, I Scream 2, Scream 3, Halloween, <laughs> um, not Halloween, Wes uh, Craven's New Nightmare, uh, Vampire in New, <laughs> Vampire. New Nightmare is good. <laughs> Fuck you. Also, also I, feel, I feel like, yeah, you... Scream 4? Scream. <laughs> gonna, Scream 4 wasn't directed by him. I think that was the first one after he died. No, wasn't it? Wasn't Scream 4 by him? Wasn't the last one he directed? Oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. That, that was, yeah, that was the last one directed doozy by him. to die okay. after. <laughs> yeah. What that a was shitty the movie. One, <laughs> what a piece of shit career. <laughs> Man went from last house on the left the like is, goddamn I, the thing is, shocker. I don't think there's a director. I genuinely don't think there's a director that I can think of that is more split down the middle on like Wes Craven doesn't really have like a middle point. He kind of just has like like up here and like really low. 
I want to say, I didn't see Shocker. I was thinking of uh, Tobe Hooper's other classic, which might make him, like, the most, like, mid, like, classic director, uh, spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Let's see. I'm just going to look up classic horror directors because Google will only show me mainstream, and I want to see. I'm just going to... I'm just trying to think of people because John Carpenter isn't... John Carpenter didn't really have a low... He had a low period, but it was like three movies. Yeah, and it's like, like post like Anything past a certain point got not great. Yeah, it's past... Like, John Carpenter just had a streak of masterpieces during the 70s and 80s, so like... Even the 90s, I mean, fuck. Even uh, um, uh, that one that's kind of about like a Stephen King character that I love, In the Mouth of Madness, is probably like one of the best 90s that's a horror. That's slapper. Slapper. So like Carpenter had it, then the 2000s happened and he lost all budgets. But John Carpenter, I would argue, had like the strongest oh, yeah. like period of any director oh, yeah. in horror. Like man, he like, started... Within, within a 20 or 30 year, you know, 20 odd year period, he had The Thing, Halloween, They Live, Escape from New York, Big Trouble in Little China, In the Mouth of Madness, The Fog, Christine, Prince of Darkness, Assault on Precinct 13, uh, Dark Star... Yeah, like body bags. Starman, I've heard is good. Yeah. From '71 to like the mid '90s, he was great. So like, that's a 20 year old stretch, like of good shit. I mean, from Assault on Precinct 13, which I think was '73, '76, '76. Well, that's Dark Star was '74, yeah. and Dark Star is a little mid, but it's not bad. I've heard good thing about this first one, The Eyes of Laura Mars. Oh yeah, and there's um. Someone's watching me, I've heard isn't bad either. From 78. Like, he's made... Like, he had a stretch of good movies. I Ghost think of Mars, though. Toby Hooper, man. He's gotta be the most inconsistent. This Ghost of Mars, I... This is not an insult to Uva Bull, but... Ghost of Mars feels like John Carpenter's Uva Bull movie. I haven't... I haven't seen it yet. It looks fun. Oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, the fun house. I don't even like that one from Tobe. I haven't seen that one. Spontaneous. Yeah, I've been on a weird. I've been on a weird thing recently. Like I've been, I've been rating some movies that people really like mid. Like Teeth. I finally watched Teeth after seventeen years. <laughs> You're a little late um, to the party. God, I hated Teeth. I'm not. God, it's it's about so teeth. it's. Uh, Teeth is insufferable. Yeah, I, I remember one and a half because the 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 gimmick is funny. I remember thinking the ha the acting and the whole like characters were just shitty. It's rough. Yeah, I did not enjoy that. Yeah. Um, one cut of the dead though. That was a good recent watch. That's a slapper. Oh, I can say who the worst like um horror master is Eli Roth. <laughs> Would you have to have made a good movie for that to happen? I uh, yeah, but I mean, people like genuinely think he's a master of horror. I think he's made who entertain them to be modern like horror fans, like people born in like the nineties who are like the best horror was in like two thousands, like those people. Like a lot. when he came out, he was hot shit. I mean, Tarantino produced Hostel for fuck's sake. Like, I mean, Hostel's good. Hostel's fun it's not good it's fun yeah I, no, what i mean by good is fun <laughs> yeah but like i mean eli ross has made I some mean, fun movies but he's never made a good movie <laughs> yeah i think the highest i've given an eli ross movie is a four yeah the highest i think is a 3.5 and that's hostile two. <laughs> yeah i did he, well he gave three and a half to thanksgiving too. oh yeah thanksgiving yeah. thanksgiving's pretty good thanksgiving i think is his best movie like objectively like his his, his best. best movie was the trailer for thanksgiving from 2007 I mean, yeah, that's it's like three minutes best. yeah that's whenever eli roth was like under three minutes he was great i can only stand him for under <laughs> three minutes like even if i'm not a rob zombie fan i understand why like people like his movie because i also like um devil's reject i think that's and a genuinely good horror movie um, but, like, even though I don't like him, I can see why people like him. I can't see people unironically calling Eli Roth a master of horror, because he's made, like, 
Cabin Fever is fun. Hustle is fun. Hustle 2 is fun. Then he had a... Woof. Then he made I, Green Inferno and Knock Knock. <laughs> I mean, I'll say I've seen every Rob Zombie movie. And what I'll say about Rob Zombie versus Eli Roth is, you know, I can understand both sides of liking him or hating him. I'm kind of in the middle because, you know, his movies have been 50-50 on if I enjoy them. Like, I, I really like House of a Thousand Corpses, which I know you don't like, but, well, that's that's irrelevant. But um, I like Halloween too, so that's a... <laughs> me, me and Carl in solidarity on that one. I... Actually, no. Multiple people on my that I follow on yeah okay four five four and a half five people looking back really like Rob Zombie's remakes and I think that's because Halloween from David Green are yeah, so no, god awful yeah. that people are like you know what we were yeah. too mean to Rob Zombie and I agree <laughs> I agree the Halloween from Rob Zombie isn't bad now that yeah. we have more it's, Halloween it's, movies it's not great I actually think the second one is far better than the first one because he at least tried something new but I haven't seen the second one but like. As a whole, it's, it's, in the it's Halloween very experimental, franchise, and if you treat it like a Halloween movie, you're not going to enjoy it. As a franchise, Halloween, surprisingly enough, Rob Zombie's entry might be top five. I would say so. Yeah, Halloween two definitely top five in the series. Maybe even both of them. I would say it's Halloween one, two, three, and then his two. I'm inclined to agree, cause oh boy, past three, that franchise got rough. I mean, I mean four, five, and six are fun but like they're movies that i forget about as soon as i watch them and then i really hated resurrection was that the one with buster rush h2o <laughs> which one h2o is buster the one people Rage? like with jamie lee curtis still and then resurrections where they kill her oh yeah and it has a oh, god is it buster Dang. rhymes in it yeah I think. buster rhymes in one of those God, but Rob Zombie, I I will say, even if you hate him, he at least has like a deep appreciation of the genre and has like a singular vision. Same for Eli Roth. I mean, I like. But Eli Roth, Roth is like Eli Roth is like he's a little turkey. Yeah. I don't know. Eli Roth, what's what what was funny is the behind the scene to Thanksgiving. He's like nobody made a Thanksgiving horror movie. I'm like, bro, Blood Rage. Yeah, Blood Rage is my favorite movie of all time mentioned. Blood Rage is better than Thanksgiving, I'll say that. I think, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's my favorite movie, so I would do it <laughs> Blood Rage is literally, slapper. like, number one. <laughs> Blood Rage is slapper. We did an episode on that already, if you want to listen to... But it's like Rob Zombie, this is the difference between Rob Zombie and Eli Roth for me, is when Rob Zombie makes a bad movie, I'm like, eh, well... The next one will probably be better. When Eli Roth makes a bad movie, I'm like, I don't know what I expect. <laughs> yeah, I that's I think I appreciate the Thanksgiving more because I th went into it with like low ass expectations. My ass. Yeah, was I thought it was gonna be awful. I thought it was gonna be terrible, and then people started saying it was good, and I'm like, I don't trust those people. Um, and then I watched it. I'm like, okay, it was. I mean, it's not mind blowing, but I'll definitely like. But, but I mean, for a movie directed by Eli Roth that stars Addison Ray, I was. <laughs> yeah, I, I expected far that. worse. <laughs> and like, it's a throwback to '90s slasher, and I'll take Thanksgiving over. I know what you did last summer over Urban Legends over Scream, like. Sure. It's. I mean, I don't want a, the trend of like casting people in your horror movie just because they're hot to co come back. Please, please don't, people. Please don't. But I will say, e Eli Roth made The Green Inferno. <laughs> and that is an, an inexcusable offense. That movie is. Like. That, mo that movie's existence offends me. I said that The Bye Bye My Man might be the worst theatrical mainstream horror movie ever but nah the green inferno is worse because the green inferno has no entertainment value i actually saw that one in a theater yes yeah, same i was i was under the age that was allowed to be in and i spent like a week planning on how to sneak into this movie and i was able to get in i watched it and i was like that that was the punishment yeah that was, <laughs> your... was the movie i was in college because that came out what 2015 2013 Okay, that was like I, I was fifteen. Oh, okay, I wasn't in college. I was in high school. Why did I watch that in theater? 
Who was I with? We all made mistakes. Oh, man, I don't. He know. also made rotten fruit. So Eli Roth has two one halves for me. Rotten fruit is genuinely one of the. It's an affront to anyone with eyes. I haven't seen Rotten Fruit, but uh, Eli Roth also has two one halves for me, and those are Knock Knock and Green Inferno. Knock, and I refuse gun, any God. other opinions. Knock Knock uh, is an awful movie. You know it. I know it. Everybody it is seen awful. It. It's hilarious, though. <laughs> it's not even funny. Other than Keanu Reeves' little outburst for like one scene, man. You, I didn't fuck you. You fuck me. <laughs> It was free fucking pizza. Keanu Reeves is such a shitty actor. <laughs> I but don't anyway, care. He's wholesome in... Reddit karma. He sucks as an actor. I was glad he only had two lines in John Wick 4. The only thing you can do good is fight and look menacing. But if he opens his mouth, you're like, Jesus Christ, who gave that asshole lines? <laughs> he was... Have you seen Speed? He's yes! The speed. Movie sucks! <laughs> It's, man, that's a hot take. Anyway, Ooh, we can't go. We, we we can't go under that's sixty, for... or the train will blow up. What will we do? Come on, call Keanu Reeves. Ugh, I was in Bill and Ted. Okay, good job. Go eat a. Fucking... I like Bill and Ted too. I've never seen Bill and Ted. Anyway, ending on that. We we shout out to the usual people. Go buy short shits, or I'll fucking punish you. I was sick today because of long shits. Yeah. Should have watched short shits. My man got IBS. Again. Irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bitch shitting. Oh, arigato! Um, what, oh, what are we doing next time? <laughs> next time? Oh my we, have a, we, have another, we have another double feature of all time. <laughs> if you thought we're all going... What was the weird one? Strike we're Commando and... and oh yeah, Strike Commando and um, House. House. <laughs> this one may actually be worse. <laughs> the Birds. Recovering Alfred Hitchcock's classic, The Birds and Gaspar Noé's I Stand Alone. <laughs> Why are we pairing those two uh, completely? It was supposed to be a trauma-based episode because the birds traumatized me when I was seven and I had a phobia until I was an adult. And I stand alone traumatize me as a 12 year old. So, Why was I go. watching I stand alone at 12? That's something you'll have to take up with my therapist. <laughs> well, so, yeah. I've See you never. Next time, everybody with that. Which I know I stand alone isn't a first time watch for you. I've never yeah. finished it. And I, and I'm I've never seen it. Okay. I've seen, I've seen, uh, I've seen Carne, which was like the prequel. Yeah. So I, I've never finished it. Cause after he was punching his pregnant wife for a good fucking long time, I kind of got uncomfortable. The, the birds will be the first time I've seen it since I was seven. Oh shit. Well, that's going to get re-traumatized. Herschel's PTSD just gonna... looking like the kid from Come and See. <laughs> Herschel's gonna go out of his house here like a bird, or a bird, and he's just gonna be fucking dead eyes. Anyway, um, welcome to the welcome to the AIDS Club. We'll see you guys next time. Crip gang out. Crip.